oh my god it's not it's not giving so many people want to move abroad hey friends welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is lisa and i do content around lifestyle and anything revolving around my life so if you have been watching um some of my videos i've been talking about moving abroad the process my process my journey and stuff like that so today i wanted to talk about what to consider when moving abroad so many people want to move abroad um, for various reasons it may be for love it may be for work it may be just to get um away from the tough economy um but yeah there are certain things that you need to consider before you even make the move so just get right into it so the first one of course is the visa requirements depending on what you want to move abroad um as is it because you're in a relationship is it because of work is it because you're a student um is it because you're a partner to someone who's coming to work or is a student and stuff like that then you need to know what the visa requirements for that particular reason are so for me i moved here as a student and that meant that all i needed to do was go through the visa requirements for a student um, especially because i wasn't moving with any family um, partner or anything of that sort so for me it was just about looking at what does Australia require in terms of a student visa so once at least you are able to know the requirements then you also need to consider banking so of course where you are you already have like a bank account you have been having money there and because you're moving to a different country probably a different continent you also need to consider are you gonna stay with your bank which is not advisable or are you gonna open a new bank account and what kind of bank account are you going to open so these are things you also need to consider because of course um once you start making money abroad then they're most likely gonna want to pay you in your in the country's bank account and not in your own um different bank account the other one is work so you need to think about um, even as you're coming as a student, if you're coming as a partner to someone who's coming for work and stuff like that, you, you need to consider your work situation. So are you going to work? What are you going to do? What opportunities exist? Of course, the major opportunities that exist in any country abroad are in the healthcare industry. Not to say that there are no other jobs um, in other in industries. So you need to consider what are you gonna do are you gonna just try and find work in what you were doing in your country or are you gonna kind of adjust to the new system and just find any work that you can do the other one is tax obligations so one of the very first things that i had to do after landing the following day was opening a bank account and then applying for a tax reference number so the tax reference number is what enabled me to even when i'm sending applications to write that um i have a tax reference number and stuff like that once of course they reached out um wanting to have me on board so this of course helps you just to ensure that your tax is paid um just the same way for example if you're in kenya there's kra if you're to be employed they always ask for your kra pin so it's literally the same thing they ask for your tax reference number for this of course you just need to apply online that's for australia for any other country i'm not so sure <laughs> um but yeah for australia you basically just need to apply for it online and then it will be sent to your email the other one is of course living arrangements so yeah so you're planning to move abroad but where are you gonna live the thing is so many times we think we can live with um people we know or family members but then sometimes that can be really really hard so you need to kind of talk to them and understand like talk to the person or you know in that state if you know someone and try and figure out if you can live with them for a bit before you're able to like stand on your two feet 
if you don't know anyone there's always accommodation especially in terms of like student accommodation you can always find hostels the thing i also like about living abroad is that you can also find roommates on different sites such as um flatmates.com and other sites even facebook <laughs> but you need to be careful the other one is language barrier depending on where you're moving to if you're moving to a country that does not speak english then you need to know their language so that you're able to communicate so for example if you're moving to japan then at least try and learn the language if you're moving to germany then you'll need to also learn german and stuff like that but of course if you're moving to an english-speaking country the only thing probably you'll need to adjust to is like the slang which is not like you have to learn so yeah it's an advantage if you're moving to an english-speaking country because the adjustments will be very very minimal the other one is the healthcare system so in australia when you're applying to go as a student you're required to pay medical insurance as part of um, your visa requirements so this varies depending on whether you're going to study for two years four years six years whatever years you're going for so this is something that every student has to do so once you get there there's usually um, every time you go to a hospital then you can easily claim using your um, card they have this healthcare system which is medicare so many times when you go to hospital they'll be like do you have a medicare card do you have a medicare number and stuff like that of course being in an international place then you most likely don't have this but there's different options um, that you can use for me i am using an insurance that at least pays part of my bills not all i'll still have to pay part of it but then they also pay part of um, whatever i've incurred during my hospital visits the other one is the transportation system so many times um, you're told or you've heard that surviving abroad without a car is very very hard and this actually tends to be kind of true kind of not true it just depends i think on where you are because there are places where you depending on where you're going to work where you're going to school the transport system is really streamlined but then there are places where the transport system is work so you have to like have a card it also depends on where you live where your work is where your school is where amenities are and stuff like that so it's up to you to figure out once you've of course considered like your living arrangements your work situation your school where is it and stuff like that then you can think about whether you need a car or you could easily catch the bus until you're able to get a car the good thing is also uber exists practically everywhere <laughs> so you can also catch that of course it's a bit expensive compared to public transport but it's something that you can also um, be able to catch the other one is your personal possession so once you're considering moving abroad where are you gonna take your personal stuff is it gonna are you gonna sell it are you gonna put it in storage are you gonna move with some of things what are you gonna do for me of course i left most of it with my family i moved with a bit of stuff but left most of the stuff at my parents house so it just depends um you could leave it with a friend you could sell it it purely depends on what is viable for you at that time the last one is you need to consider developing a support network i cannot emphasize this enough because moving abroad can be very very lonely and even if you move like with your partner or your family like it's just that system but then your friends have their lives even if you move to a place where you have friends um if you move to a place where you have no friends or family then of course you have to try and build that support network on your own for me what i found helpful is the fact that i'm able to kind of like go to the gym and have like a small community at the gym i'm able to go to church and have like a small community there um and even for like weekly um meetings for church and stuff like that and then of course knowing people in school i've been able to um create friendships 
as well as work but then even though that's the case sometimes it can still be very very lonely so it's up to you to see what your support system can look like it can be just having someone who's living abroad or who has lived abroad and knows um how to go about it and stuff like that or it can be your family your friends your partner who are back home and you consistently talk to so yeah that's about it those are about 10 things that you need to consider before you make the decision um, to move abroad and i hope that helped you if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i will see you in my next one bye